The following is a Simpronto Media production. Leaders. Real life leaders. Hey guys, this episode is from the Grow and Scale Now Summit, where top entrepreneurs and leaders are going to help you take your business to the next level. To get your free ticket, go to growandscalenow.com. Now to the episode. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce you to my next guest, Shanda Sumter with Hardcore Business. And she is doing an amazing job in the digital world and so many others. So Shanda, for people who haven't heard about you, please tell them a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm a mom first, which is something I'm super proud of. Uh, I became a mom at 40 and, um, and found my husband in 90 days, which is kind of interesting. I almost forgot to settle down, get married and have kids. And, um, and I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada. And when I moved to America, moved to Las Vegas, I was so broke it hurt. So I was the girl that had $500 in an envelope. I hid it in um, in the, uh, in my closet underneath my clothes so that nobody would find it. And, uh, I just, it was one of the hardest and one of the best times of my life, because I remember thinking to myself, um, just the realization that work is a privilege. You know, I wasn't allowed to work in America being Canadian. So when I finally, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of cutting through some of the pieces of the story based on time for this, this interview, but like, you know, my dad's American, I was born in Canada, and so I was legally entitled to an American citizenship, but the INS kept telling me I could be 60 years old before I get it. So it took a lot of resilience. Um, it took a lot of persistence to find an attorney that would tell me a different story and and eventually I end up getting the postman at my front door with my passport. <laughs> but, I, but through the whole process of suffering um, in America and going to school and having no money and not being allowed to work, I really, I, I, you know, God taught me how to hustle. You know what I mean? He just taught me how to hustle. He taught me how to sharpen my skills and, you know, and use that next level thinking. So when you, when you, when you've got no credit, when I had no credit, I learned how to create cash flow, flow, right? When I wasn't allowed to work in America, I learned how to hustle and learn how to get over my shyness. And so, you know, I just have lots of moments like that that have built me to here. And now. When I started my company, I just wanted to make $5,000 a month. And now I've grown this incredible enterprise online, which is crazy. So tell people a little bit about the size of your business and tell people what are the three things that really caused your business to kind of explode and take it to the next level? So we, we started our company. Uh, in fact, I think we've changed our name five times in nine years. Um, and it's never slowed down our growth. Uh, at all. Uh, I'm still, you know, we're an eight figure company and we'll go into nine figures here soon. And the, and the truth honestly is, is that um, my company's still small in the scope of the world. You know what I mean? So when I look at, when I, when I look at growing the company, I think I would, one of the main things is I was humble enough and probably naive enough to be successful. And so I never expected it to become what it's become. So that's been a superpower in its own, just naive enough to be successful. So I just stayed one step at a time and worked on whatever, whatever the main challenge I was having in the moment, I just worked on it. I don't have a formal education in uh, business. Uh, my dad is an entrepreneur. I come from a line of entrepreneurs, but I also have the other side of my family that were laborers and workers like my mom. And so I just chose what side of the fence I wanted to hang out on. So I'd say one tip is like, get out of your own way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the truth is, I don't care how smart you are. You never know if something's going to work or not. Any great marketer knows that, especially marketing online. I mean, I've got a lot of experience at it at this point. And when I, when I look at like what something I'll think will be successful and it'll flop. And so just be naive. So that's been a, a big superpower of mine. Um, the second thing is like, just instead of focusing on just your inspiration of what you want to create, I have really focused on people before profits. And what that looks like for me is I've focused on not just building followers online, I'm not interested in followers online. In fact, you know, when you look at our assets inside of this company, we have an email list that's a buyer's list. And so it's an asset. So we've built our social media followings mainly through our email list. And so the real, 
So there's, there's, you know, there's followers online and then there's actual people who want to consume work and be a part of whatever it is that you're, um, that you're offering. So uh, I would say really step number two or, or strategy number two would be focus on the audience of buyers, not followers. So do you want to be rich or do you want to be famous? You better make up that, that decision. So I've never cared about being famous. I've never wanted to even be the face of my brand um, at all. It's never, I've just always wanted to be a businesswoman, make money, make an impact, you know, and do good work in the world. And I never wanted it tied to me. And so it's crazy that in digital marketing, I have to do so many Instagram stories or email marketing or pictures of myself with my husband in Napa at a, at a marriage retreat and stuff like all that stuff has nothing to do with business yet. It's what sells the business. Hey guys, I want to take a minute real quick to tell you about this retreat that I'm putting together. It's going to be just 10 lucky people that I'm going to select and we are going to stay in a five-star resort in Miami and it's going to be pamper time. But the most important thing, I'm going to open up my books. I'm going to show you everything. You're going to leave there with my Word docs. You're going to leave with a USB drive with all the information that I've possibly done, every system in place. A lot of times you go to these conferences, you know, you get all jazzed up, but you don't walk away with anything. You're going to walk away with this retreat with tons of systems. Go to ChantelRay.com slash retreat to learn more. Calling all entrepreneurs, leaders, and business owners. Are you looking to grow and scale your business to help more people, increase your profits, and build the business of your dreams? Then you need to attend the Grow and Scale Now Summit, a free virtual event where you can learn from top leaders and thinkers who have grown and scaled their businesses by the millions. Unlock your potential and discover the secrets to take your business to the next level. Click the link in the show notes to claim your free ticket. Right, so number three is, um, you know, integrate your vulnerability in your life, in your marketing, you know? So while I was figuring out how to market, I just shared my bloopers in life, um, not from a place of victim, but from a place of empowerment. So I always found if I could care enough about the audience, or even if it was just 12 people, if I could care enough about those 12 people, then I just show up different. You probably are like that too. I show up different for people than if I'm just sitting, you know, trying to figure out my own problem. So if I take a problem and bring it to the, to the light of sharing it with other people, I can typically come up with a strategy or a, at least a good mindset around how to deal with that that moves me forward again. So that's really been the three things I think I've built this whole thing on. Yeah. It's funny because I just had a guy on my leadership podcast, Mike McCallowitz, and he wrote a book called Profit First, and he just wrote another book called Fix This Next. And what he says mm. is that the biggest problems that entrepreneurs have is they don't know what their biggest problem is. So they, they kind of first go to like, okay, we have stagnating sales. Now we have staff turnover. Now we have unhappy customers. And so basically they just go in endless circles of putting out urgent fires and prioritizing the wrong things. I completely so. agree with that. <laughs> um, I could, I, the way that I language that is I say, um, you, you know, like I help people, I help entrepreneurs put things in the right order. It's the same thing that he's saying. I, I've identified that same challenge. So what are some of the things that you've done to help fix that? Like what are, how do you figure out, okay, right now, can you talk about very specifically like, okay, we had a problem with this. This is what I did. This is how I solved it. So I find that leadership is actually the answer to all of that. So say I'm sitting in a situation and sales is a challenge, right? Like it's like, okay, sales is a challenge. And can't find the buyers or I can't close them, right? And I'm in a situation where conversions are, are bad, income's not where it needs to be, but yet I have this vision or these resources or uh, these bills, these monthly overheads that are there. Um, you know, sales really isn't the problem because the truth is, is, you know, when I, I can take a, a rookie and bring them onto my sales team and teach them leadership on like outbound calls. Every, I don't know about you, but last time I checked, everybody knows how to use a phone. People, last time I checked, everybody knows how to direct message somebody on Facebook or Instagram. They just do. I mean, you can just figure it out in seconds. The challenge we're having is a leadership problem. And so we address that across the board with myself, 
when I come up against something that's challenging, I don't sit there and go, hmm, what's the formula? I never do that. I already know there's an answer to it. I know somebody's figured it out. The challenge is, is why am I not doing what it takes to find that resource? Why am I not being resourceful enough? So I actually go to the core of the problem, kind of like if you're sick, it doesn't make sense to just give yourself an aspirin because it's like, why are you getting the headaches? You know, are you malnutritioned? Are you, you know, do you have, you know, a, a hydration problem? Entrepreneurs have a leadership problem. And I will tell you, I don't care how successful you are, you will only grow to the, to the depth of your leadership ability. Hope you enjoyed this episode from the Grow and Scale Now Summit. Again, you can get your free ticket now at growandscalenow.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Life Leadership. If you'd like to get the show notes or access more resources, log on to realliferleaders.com slash podcast to get the show notes from this episode and any other resources we might have mentioned. And also, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to review or rate this podcast on Apple Podcasts to help spread the word. And if you have any leadership questions you want answered, email podcast at realliferleaders.com. 